Hey guys, in this video, I'm finally gonna talk about sales taxes. I've been getting lots of questions about this. A lot of my students are confused and overwhelmed by you know, trying to set up their sales taxes and their the settings on their Shopify dashboard, but please don't worry. This video is gonna shed a lot of light on this so that you don't have to be concerned about this, so you don't have to be overwhelmed about this, all right guys? So just kind of follow these steps and you guys are gonna be okay. Um, it's actually not that much work. You know, at the beginning, especially when you first start your business, you won't have to worry about this too much, if not at all, depending on where you live. So just, you know, keep that in mind. And once you start making lots of money and this does apply to you, you'll have so much money you can just hire an accountant. So again, this is not a big deal. Don't don't get freaked out. Um, I also want to point out that while pretty much everyone in the world that makes an income, whether through their job or through selling things, uh, does have to pay some kind of taxes to the government, this video only applies to people who are selling to U.S. customers. Whether you yourself live in the U.S. or maybe you live outside the U.S., like in Europe, U.K., Australia, it doesn't matter. If you plan on selling to customers who live in the U.S., then you need to watch this video, okay? And this video is going to apply to you. Unfortunately, I don't have as much experience with how sales taxes and sales tax laws work in other countries, so I cannot really provide recommendations on that because like I mentioned in the past, I live in California and I sell to US customers for the most part, predominantly mostly US customers, so I don't really you know, think about a lot of the other countries. So um, just wanted to say that up front because I know I'm gonna get students who are gonna email me and say, hey, I live in New Zealand or I live in Iceland and can you please help me with my sales taxes? Before you send that to me, just understand the answer is gonna be no. I, I cannot help you because I don't have enough experience um, and I don't wanna give you wrong information. So, but again, if you're trying to sell to the US and you're gonna have US customers, then please continue watching this video. The first thing you're gonna do, uh, you know, while I was trying to, do a lot of research to create this lecture video for you. I came across this YouTube video that was just so amazing that I really want you guys to watch it. It's gonna give you a nice baseline understanding of sales taxes. It does also talk a little bit about income tax, but you know, for the most part, please focus on the sales taxes because chances are if you've ever had a job and you have a wage, you, you know, you make wages or you have some kind of income, you've already paid income tax right, to your government. So I'm not really worried about you knowing how to do that. Either you do it, your parents do it, or your accountant does it for you on an annual basis or whatever. For sales taxes, however, this is not something you would have paid the government in the past because people only pay sales tax when they have a business and they make sales. So sales taxes will be new to you if this is the first time you have a business. Um, so please watch this YouTube video. I've attached a link to the, the resources of this lecture. Please click that link. It should say something like YouTube link. Please click that and it will bring you to a page that looks like this. There should be a girl that looks like this on the YouTube video. It is 12 minutes long, but it's gonna be really, really important that you watch this. This is gonna really help you kind of understand taxes and, and, and you're not gonna be so overwhelmed after you watch it, okay? And it's gonna give you a lot of good baseline knowledge. So please pause the video right now and watch it. And when you're done, come back to this video. Now that you finished watching the YouTube video, I just want to do a little bit of a summary of what the video said so that we can be you know, on the same page. First off, Shopify does not automatically collect sales taxes for you. You have to set it up yourself. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, secondly, you must collect sales taxes from customers in every state where you have a physical or economic nexus, right? And I'm gonna to explain to you what a nexus is in just a second, but I just wanna repeat this bullet point. You have to collect sales taxes from customers in every state where you also have a nexus there. So for example, I have a nexus in California, so every time I make a sale, to a customer who is also in California, I have to collect sales taxes from that California customer, okay? So your question is probably, where do I have a nexus then? Either a physical or economic nexus. Those are gonna be the two terms that you hear a lot. It doesn't matter if you have a physical or economic nexus, a nexus is a nexus, okay? They just kind of use both of those terms because sometimes, depending on where you live physically, it will determine if you have a nexus, and sometimes, depending on your sales and your revenue, it will determine if you have an economic nexus. But again, if you have any kind of nexus, whether it's physical or economic, 
in a state, you have to collect sales tax from customers every time you make a sale to a customer who is also in that state. So the first, so to answer your question, where do I have a nexus? You know, where do you have a nexus? If your company has a physical location, even if it's your bedroom, you have a nexus in that state. So for example, I live in California, but say when I first started, I had a, I worked out of my bedroom off my laptop, but because I live in California, I have a nexus in California and I have to collect sales taxes every time I make a sale to a customer who also lives in California. If they lived in Arizona, then I wouldn't have to collect sales taxes um, because I didn't have a nexus in Arizona. I only have a nexus in California. Um, criteria number two, uh, if you happen to have employees uh, that live, maybe there's an employee that does all your Facebook ads or you know does your fulfillment and he lives in um, Texas, then you automatically also have a nexus in Texas. So even though I live in California, if I have workers who live in Texas, I'm gonna have a nexus in both California and in Texas. Number three, states where you make a certain amount of sales above a particular threshold in either dollars or transactions. And this threshold, this criteria for a uh, nexus will be different for every single state. And that's why it gets a little bit confusing. So what I've done is I've actually added a link that shows you the criteria or the threshold in either dollars or transactions for every single state. And once you meet that threshold, you now have an economic nexus in that state. So if you click that link, it should be in the attached resources. It should bring you to a page that looks something like this, economic nexus state guide. And on the left side, you'll see all the different states, right? And I wanna focus your attention to this column right here, the threshold column. So let's say you sell, you sell obviously you sell to US customers in every single state but you happen for whatever reason, you sell the best in Alabama and you make $250,000 in revenue just from Alabama. Once you hit that 250,000, you now have a nexus in Alabama and you are responsible in, to have a sales tax permit in every state that you have a nexus. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But to continue on, I wanna give you another example. Um, in Arkansas, if you make 100,000 or you make 200 or plus transactions a year, then you have a nexus in Arkansas. So sometimes it's the total revenue you make per year, and sometimes it's the total transactions. But chances are, um, you if, if anything, you'll probably hit the transactions before you ever hit the revenue, because the revenue is actually, even if you did 200 transactions, you probably won't even be close to 100,000. So you'll generally hit the transaction threshold before you hit the revenue threshold. Uh, but states like California don't even have a transaction threshold. They only have a revenue threshold. So in California, to have a nexus here, you you will have you'll meet the threshold for a nexus in California when you make uh, five hundred thousand dollars in sales to um, you know California customers, and then just keep looking on through all of them. So now that we understand when you have a nexus in a state and that you have to pay sales taxes for every state that you have a nexus in, what do you need to actually be concerned about to start your business? So I've broken this slide and the next slide into what you need to worry about now and what you need to worry about down the road. So let's focus on what you need to worry about now. If you are a US seller, meaning you live in the US like I do, I live in California, you will have a nexus where you live just like I have a nexus in California. Automatically, before you even sell one item, you already have a nexus in that state. Therefore, you're gonna have to apply for a sales tax permit in your state that you reside in. Then you're gonna turn on Shopify to collect sales taxes in your state uh, only. And this is all you have to do for now, okay? Um, so every state that you have a nexus in, you also have to apply for a sales tax permit um, in that state so that you can start collecting sales taxes from your customers every time you make a sale to a customer that also lives in that same state. For non-US sellers, for example, let's say you live in Australia, but you sell to US customers. Right now, before you start, before you've made any sales, you don't need to worry about any sales tax permit or collecting any sales tax yet, okay? So you're a little bit easier for you guys. 
Now let's think about what will happen down the road. Let's say for a second, hypothetically, you know, you start your business and you start making hundreds of thousands of dollars and thousands and thousands of transactions. Then these are a couple of things that you need to worry about. But if you if you're not there yet, then you don't really need to worry about this. But for those of you who are making hundreds of thousands of dollars and hundreds and hundreds of transactions, whether you live in the US or you live outside the US, if your Shopify store becomes very successful later on and be, and you be, and you end up meeting the criteria or threshold for a nexus in any particular state, again, I've already attached the link, you will be responsible to get a sales tax permit for that state and start collecting sales taxes every time you make a sale to a customer who is also from that state, okay? You can't collect sales taxes from customers who live in every single state, only the, the states that you have a nexus in and when the customer is also residing in that state. And you will automatically know that because when they fill out um, their information during checkout, you will capture that information because you'll have their address. But, you know, this may lead to, you know, depending on how much money you meet and how many states you meet the threshold in, you may have two or three, four, five nexuses, especially if you're very, very successful. But remember, at that point in time, you'll be making so much money that you could just hire an accountant. So it's pretty much a moot point, right? So don't, you know, there's not really much to worry about. The only thing you really have to worry about is at the very, very beginning, meaning if you live in the U.S., um, and you plan to sell to US customers, then you have to get a sales tax permit for your state, okay? But you could actually start selling even before your tax permit comes in, and then just add in your tax ID later. And I'll show you how to do all that on Shopify in just a second. But if all this is just too confusing, too overwhelming, then you have a couple options. You can just hire an accountant right off the bat, um, You know, especially for those of you who might have a little bit more startup uh, capital, uh, you have some money to use, then you just hire an accountant. For me, my account only costs $250 a month. Very, very cheap. Um, although I would say on average, accountants cost anywhere between 350 and 400 at least here in the United States. You can also go to experts.shopify.com. There's a lot of freelancers on there. There are some resources for uh, getting sales tax guidance, uh, but there's not that much on there. But I wanted to throw that resource in there just in case, you, um, just so that you know about it. Um, the third one is the Tax Jar Shopify app. Um, you know, while I was doing research to create this video, um, there were so many people that were recommending the Tax Jar app, especially a lot of the people on YouTube talking about sales taxes for Shopify. They all recommend this Tax Jar app. Please keep in mind, I have never used this app. And when I looked up the reviews on the Shopify app store, they were a little bit mixed. Um, but again, this is the app that everyone recommends for sales taxes on Shopify because it's pretty much one of the only apps out there that helps with uh, sales taxes on Shopify. So maybe that's why everyone recommends it, even though it doesn't really have good reviews. Um, and then Avalara, this is kind of a full service agency that can help you with your sales taxes um, and pretty much everything that pertains to your taxes with your Shopify business. I, I have seen Shopify recommend this, this company a couple times, but when I looked them up, the reviews were very, very, very poor. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, but if I were you guys, I would just hire an accountant um, after you start making, you know, some money so that you can use that money to hire that accountant. Like I mentioned, even though, you, let's say you live in Texas and you know you're gonna have to get a sales tax permit here uh, in Texas and you're gonna have to collect sales taxes from customers who, who are also from Texas, you can start technically start selling and making money and collecting sales taxes before you get your full permit and have a, and your uh, your tax permit ID. You can always input your tax permit ID after the fact, okay? And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And last but not least, please notify me if any of these links are ever broken or they don't work. You know, I really want, I want to make sure that you can access all these resources that I'm trying to share with you. Um, they're very, very helpful. Uh, and oh, I forgot to mention, earlier when I said you have to sign up for a sales tax permit. I've added a link in the attached resources that show you how to sign up for a sales tax permit in pretty much every uh, country, every state. So if you click that link, it should bring you to a page that looks like this, right? How to register for a sales tax permit in every single state. It's super valuable information. For example, if I go to California, I can click it. And if I scroll down, um, there you have a link right here that shows you where I have to go, what government website I have to go to, to to apply for that sales tax permit. Um, and it leads me here where I can register for that sales tax permit. Some states 
you know, you can get a tax permit for free. Some states have a small fee for it. Um, just be aware of that as well. Okay, right now I'm gonna switch over to the Shopify dashboard. I'm gonna show you how to set up your sales taxes even before you have your sales tax permit. So give me one second. So the first thing you're gonna go do is go to your Shopify settings here at the bottom left, then you click taxes right here. Then you're gonna click, click here, United States sales tax, and you click set up, okay? And then here you'll see sales tax collection. You're not collecting sales tax in any state at the moment. So what we're gonna do, it says you've added a location in California, which is the location I use for my Shopify, or at least the Shopify membership. It says if you have a nexus in this state, which we do because we live here, you might need to start collecting sales tax there, which we know from basically what we just learned and what I reviewed. So I need to, first, what I wanna do is, um, I wanna start collecting sales tax right away if you're starting to sell, right? Just turn it on, even if you don't yet have your sales tax permit, turn on the collection of sales taxes because you don't, because you you can, because if you know you're gonna start selling and you're gonna be making money, you wanna start collecting sales taxes now because later on when that permit comes in and you have to report and pay all your taxes to the government at the end of the year, they're, they don't care if your, your sales tax permit didn't come in yet. They're gonna calculate how much revenue you made the entire year, even before you got your sales tax permit, and they're gonna calculate how much you owe them based off all of your revenue. So you wanna collect your sales taxes now, turn it on, and then later on, you just input your tax ID. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna click collect sales taxes, I'm gonna choose my state, and then here, after you get your sales tax ID permit, you would enter it here. If you have, if you already have it, then please enter it. But it says, if you don't have your sales tax ID yet, you can enter it later. And then you just say, collect sales taxes. All right, and then boom. If I go back now, and I go here, if I go back into United States and click manage, you'll see that it says, sales tax collection. You're collecting sales tax in one state in the US, which is California. And as a reminder, you have to collect sales tax from customers uh, for every state that you have a nexus in. And again, every state that you have a nexus in, you have to have a sales tax permit. But you only collect sales tax when the customer is also from the same state that you have a nexus and sales tax permit from. Also, I wanna point out that when you go to products, every time you add a product, let me go into this product here. Make sure, uh, where is it? Oh, it's not here, but make sure that you're collecting sales taxes for all of your items. When you first add it, there should be a little link. There should be a little box that says collect sales tax for this product. Um, I believe it's automatically already checked. I can't find error. Actually, let me add a new product. So, you, oh here. So when you add a new product, if you scroll down to the bottom, it says charge sales tax on this product, okay? Or charge tax on this product. So always make sure this is clicked, all right? And then, um, and I think Shopify, depending on where the customer's address is, will automatically collect sales tax from the customer if they are in a state that you have a nexus and sales tax permit from as well, or in your settings, you know, you have you have it set up to collect sales tax in that state. All right, sorry for kind of rambling. Um, I'm trying to learn all this on my own because I set this up a long time ago and my accountant pretty much deals with all this for me. So hopefully that all made sense. Um, I'm trying to get my accountant to come on to do a video for, for you guys as well, but um, he's been kind of busy. But um, hopefully that helped and kind of eased your concerns about sales taxes. As you can see, if you, at least right now when you're starting off, if you live outside the uh, United States, and you're, then you don't even need to worry about anything, right? You have no nexus. You, have, you don't need to apply for any sales tax permit until you start making lots and lots and lots of money, but that's gonna be really far down the road. If you live in the US, then you automatically have a nexus in whatever state that you live in, and you have to set, uh, get a sales tax permit for that state, and then add that state into your tax settings right here. Um, but besides that, you're probably only gonna have that one nexus, right? You don't really have to worry about a second nexus or applying for another sales tax permit until you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars. So hopefully that makes you feel a little bit better. All right, guys, I'll see you guys on the next video.